Okay, so let's look at an intersectional analysis about pay equity. So we start off with a person, an employee from a company, and that person is associated with a lot of different data points. One of the data points that is associated with that person is their salary. And another one of the data points is the amount of time that that person has been working for your company. So most organizations think that time and salary should be related. Then there are a whole bunch of other social identity variables associated with each person. So for example, there's a gender identity and a um, ethnic identity and uh, ability identity, uh, an immigration identity, and a number of other social classes that this person can belong to. And an intersectional analysis is going to look at the combination of all the different social identities and how they interact or intersect with the relationship between the amount of time a person has been working for your company and the salary that they're receiving. So that's an intersectional pay equity analysis. So let's take all the data from the people that we have and put it kind of on a map. So one side of the map is going to be the salaries and the other side of the map is going to be the amount of time spent working for your company. So in this example, we're only going to include people that are in the same job class, so or the same job description. So in this example, let's say we're going to only include the managers of an organization, so that these people are all doing um, the same kind of work and are in the same job class or salary band. So we want to know for all these people who are the same in a lot of ways, how is the amount of time that they've been with a company related to the amount of income that they're really earning from that company? And how do their different combinations of social identities influence that? So we're going to take each person and find their place on the map. So one, two, two years, this person has been working for the company and they're earning say $4,000 a year. Of course, this isn't real data. Then we'll take all the other managers who are working at the same type of job in this company and we find their place on the map. So you move each person over to the right a number of uh, years they've been working for the company and then up for the salary that they're getting. This person's getting $6,000 a year and they've worked for five. One, two, three, four, four and a half years working for the company and then up to show their salary. And then we take all the other managers and we put them where they live on the map. So this is how we start building a mathematical model. We take all of these people and we put them on their places on the map. We wanna understand at first what the average kind of path or trajectory is for all of these managers. What's the overall relationship between the amount of time they've spent with the company and the salary that they're earning. We find out what the trajectory looks by doing something called a regression, where we put all of these people's information into a statistical model and we come out with a line which shows us the typical trajectory or trend or path along this map through your company of the time and the money. Then we can see for each person how much above or below they are from the line. And that tells us a little bit about a pay equity gap for these individuals. However, this pay equity gap is just for everybody in the company that we're looking at it doesn't take yet into account any of their social identities. So let's look at the social identities. Let's say social identity A is binary and a person can either be a pink person or a green person. And we'll collect self-report data from each of these managers in the company and we'll add that data into our mathematical model or our map. 
and everybody will either be green or pink, depending on their self-identification. And this is us starting to be able to look at the pay equity from a social point of view. So the thing that we do here is now instead of one black line, we'll be able to make two lines, one pink line and one green line. And we can look at these two lines and, and ask, um, because of this social identity class, pink or green, are people experiencing different paths through your the company's uh, pay structure or compensation structure? And yes, indeed they are. The two lines are very different. And we can see that managers who have a green social identity are earning much higher salaries for the same number of years working in the company than pink people are. So again, just like with the black line, we can use how far above or below the various lines people are to look at a pay equity gap. And in this case, since it's an intersectional analysis, instead of adjusting pink people to the pink line and green people to the green line, in a pay equity analysis, you would adjust everybody to the green line because equity is when everyone, in this case, is pay being paid at the same rate as the most well-paid people. That's what's traditionally done in a pay equity analysis. So let's make this a little complicated and add a second social identity. And this will be whether your favorite color is yellow or whether your favorite color is blue. And you can be um, any combination. So you can be pink and blue, pink and yellow, green and blue, or green and yellow. And we'll again collect self-report data from all of our managers and we'll add this data into our map, into our mathematical model. And you'll see that there is a little bit of missing data, which is how it always happens in the real world. There's always a little bit of missing data. And this is where the intersectional analysis begins, because instead of simply looking at four separate lines, a pink line, a green line, a yellow line, and a red line, what we're gonna do is acknowledge that these individual managers are experiencing all of their social identities at the same time. So we'll look at an intersectional analysis, which is looking at their social identities at the same time. So we'll make a pink and yellow line and we will make a pink and blue line and we'll make a blue and green line and we'll make a yellow and green line. And so these are the intersectional lines. And again, you can see that these are even more different than just the two lines because we're looking at a multi-dimensional equity analysis from an intersectional way. And you can see that all of the um, green people don't have all of the ex same experience, just like all of the blue people don't have the same experience. You have to look at both of their social identity classes together because a blue person who is also a pink person has a very different line than a blue person who's also a green person you can see that those two lines are very, very different. That's how we get to an intersectional analysis using social identity classes. First, we just use a black line, which is where we look at everybody at once and look at um, how we would move people up or down to meet the average line. Then we look at identity classes one at a time and just make two dimensional lines, so our green line and our pink line. And then finally, we look at all the social classes in a intersectional way where we'll have four lines. So this is how you conduct an intersectional pay equity analysis from a multi multiplicative point of view rather than an additive point of view. So truly intersectional.